cooking bananas, they don't look all that attractive. And the reason being for that is, this is what it should look like when you get it in the store, in the grocery store, nice and green. This one here is to go a bit discolored and stuff like that. This was, it was my mom's. Um, unfortunately, my uncle passed away and her and my dad had to leave to go back to the Caribbean to, uh, I don't know, arrange funeral and stuff like that for my uncle. So she gave it to me. It's been sitting in the fridge for about a week now. And that's the reason why it looks like this. Again, this is what it should look like. What I'm gonna do is, and the noise that you're hearing is, um, it's very windy in Canada today. I mean, very windy. I think gusts up to 80 kilometers an hour. So there's wind outside, plus the dishwasher is going. And because the dishwasher is going, my paring knives are all in there, so I'm using my little, it's a gift I got from Zaire. I think it was for Father's Day. It's a lovely little Damascus pocket knife. All you want to do is cut off the top and the bottom stem and the thickness of the skin, you're just going to give it a cut all the way down like that. Yeah, that's it. Now, you notice that sort of sap, I don't know if you guys can see that that will be very sticky and it may have the tendency to want to stain your hands. If you want it, you can go ahead and take some olive oil or any sort of oil and give your hand a nice coating of that oil. That noise that you just heard there, that is the dishwasher draining. And that will form a protective coat or wear gloves and that is all you would do. So again, I didn't intend for this part to be so long but you would top the top, the bottom, I can leave that label on there, that's fine, but small thing. Who knows what that will do to us later on in life. And we cut it down the center, well, on the side. Next up, you put it into a deep pot, cover it with water on medium-high heat, bring it up to a boil, and then we will boil it or cook it. And this is the easiest way. Now, you would see other people, they would peel it before um, boiling it but this method here you know this is the easier method to be in my honest opinion and the reason why we made those cuts is later on once it's fully cooked we will use that sort of opening to to peel the green bananas the other green bananas that you saw that have another recipe coming up so if you like green cooking bananas so yeah when you go to the grocery store you're looking for green cooking bananas in the Caribbean we lovingly call it green fig or green cooking fig or Yo, it's all kind of names, but we usually refer to it as figs and not banana. It's starting to come up to a boil now. So what I'm going to do is once it has a rolling boil, I'm going to reduce the heat. I'm going to switch burners because here's where we're going to start the ackee and saltfish on this side here. It's a great time while this is coming up to a boil to prep the other ingredients. So you have everything ready to go. The bananas won't take long to cook. You will see the split get bigger and you'll see they all start to float to the top. Yeah, it will go dark like that. That is just the way it goes. And that is when it's gonna, you know, it's indication that it's all done. Six minutes later, you'll see they're all floated. And you know, it's pretty much cooked all the way through. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it off the fire. We're gonna drain it and allow it to cool so we're able to handle it. If you're wondering why I didn't salt the water, yes, you can certainly salt the water. But the remaining salt in the salted cod fish that we'll be using, will be enough to have balance off things. If salt is your thing, you want to add some salt in there, by all means do so, but we're gonna shut things down and drain it and allow it to cool. My saucepan is on a medium flame and I'm gonna go in with a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Just gonna move that around. We've got onions, got some bell peppers, scotch bonnet pepper, and hit that with one clove, two cloves of garlic. Now, I would prefer to have some fresh thyme in here. I don't have any thyme in the kitchen right now, well, in the refrigerator. So, but if you have thyme, please add some thyme in here. It'll add a lovely flavor to things. Fresh ground black pepper. And by adding the peppers and onion and everything first, um, the garlic won't burn. I, but again, my heat is on low now. I forgot to mention that my heat is on low. I just want everything to soften up. The scotch bonnet pepper had the seeds and everything and I used an entire thing. But of course, I like it spicy. If you don't like it spicy, you can, one, remove the seeds and the white sort of membrane surrounding the seeds there. That kind of 
tames it down a bit or you know just don't or use as much as you you can handle basically as the fun happens in there I'm gonna add some grape tomato so that's another quick little stir and I'm using grape tomato you can use any tomato you want it's just so happens tomatoes is very expensive in the grocery store right now and I find that the grape tomato cherry tomatoes tends to be a little bit more affordable here is where we're gonna start adding all of that salted cod to there and how to prepare salted cod. Basically, and I'm gonna add the rest of it in, I'm adding half a pound. Basically all you do is you soak it in, in cold water or you boil it and you, and the reason why we boil it is to rehydrate it and to um, remove most of the salt. I have a video on the Food FAQ channel showing you guys how to do that. And even though you boil it, that salted cod or you soak it in water, it will still have quite a bit of um, salt remaining in it. So that is why I didn't add any salt to the green bananas when we were cooking it. I'm just gonna let that on, remain there on that low heat for about four or five minutes. I want all that salted cod to really, you know, in the Caribbean we love our salt fish. We really like our salt fish. The ackee I'll be using is straight out of a can, but what I like doing is rinsing it and be very, very gentle when working with the ackee from a can because it's very tender. It may want to fall apart on you. So all I do is cool water and I rinse it. And being very gentle, we're gonna add the ackee to the pot. And just as gentle, you just want to fold it in. Be very, very gentle. We don't want to break it up too much. We just want to warm this through now. Four minutes after adding the ackee to the pot, I finish it off with a little bit of parsley. Fold that in just to spread out that little greenery throughout. We are very, you know, we eat with our eyes first. So, you know, brightening it up with that little bit of parsley there at the end. And there we go, you just made ackee and salt fish. Yeah, it does look like eggs. I know every time I make ackee and salt fish, everybody's like, yo, Chris, that's looking like eggs, scrambled eggs. But I'm telling you, if you ever had ackee and salt fish, it is one of the best dishes. I, I'm, I'm not even joking. To come out of the Caribbean. Jamaica, pull all your flowers. The green bananas are cool to the touch now. So, what you do where, where that split was notice how easy it is to just do like that and there you go boiled green cooking bananas to go with our ackee and salt fish and yo this is our best food i'm telling you breakfast mm. brunch mm. breakfast for dinner mm -hmm. <laughs> sup soldiers listen if you enjoy this recipe i'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing if you've made the recipe Take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm mean, trying to tell people the email address, then butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. <laughs>